If your U.S. passport has expired or has less than eight months left on it, it's time to renew it. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to renew a U.S. passport step by step and avoid common mistakes. So let's dive in and get your new passport. Renewing your passport is much easier than getting it for the first time. If this is your first time ever applying for a U.S. passport, check out this video. But if you're renewing, keep on watching. Now, keep in mind that most countries require you have a passport that's valid for at least six months before they'll let you in. So you should renew your passport at least seven months before it expires, but to be on the safe side, I would even say eight months. Unless you're traveling in the next few weeks and need a new passport urgently, you do not need to apply in person and can renew your passport by mail. If you live outside the U.S., you need to renew your passport at a U.S. embassy or consulate. I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but if you need more information, leave me a comment and I'd be happy to share. Now, to renew by mail, you need to meet the following criteria, which most people do. One, that your current passport is not damaged. Two, it was issued when you were 16 years or older. Three, it was issued in the last 15 years. This means if your passport is expired, that's okay, but it probably can't be expired for more than five years for you to meet this criteria. And four, it was issued in your current name, and if it wasn't, you have legal proof of a name change. If you don't meet these criteria, you'll have to apply for a new passport in person. If you do meet these criteria, there are three steps to renewing your U.S. passport. First, complete form DS-82, which is the U.S. passport renewal application. Then, gather your supporting documents and payment. And finally, mail your completed form, payment, and supporting documents. Let's start with step one, filling out form DS-82. Let me show you how to get the form. Okay, so let me show you how to get to form DS-82. You're going to go to the home page of the Department of State site, which is travel.state.gov, and I'm going to share any links mentioned in this video in the description below. So you'll start by clicking on get a U.S. passport. And then at the top navigation bar, you'll see something that says already have a passport. You're going to click on that. And then on the very left, you're going to click on renew my passport. Now you'll come to this page where you'll scroll down a little bit. And here, number one, you'll see fill out form DS-82. When you click on the plus sign, it'll give you two options. The form filler, which lets you complete the form online, and then you can print out the completed form to mail. Or if you prefer to actually write out the form by hand in pen, then click on PDF and we'll bring up a blank form. Now the actual form is actually just a page and a half, and I'm just going to point out a few quick things on the actual form itself. Um, at the very top, you have the option between a passport book and card, and most of you probably know the difference, but a passport card cannot be used for air travel. It can be used only for land or sea travel. So unless you live near the border and are going back and forth frequently, you're not going to be able to use a passport card for travel. However, um, some people just choose to get it as an extra form of ID, um, but do note that it is an extra $30 to get the passport card. And for most people, a passport book is more than sufficient. Uh, the next thing to note is the difference between a regular book and a large book. Now, it doesn't cost extra to get a large book, and a large book simply has more pages. So if you travel frequently, I would recommend getting the large book so that you don't run out of pages quickly. Now, the application itself is pretty straightforward. It asks for basic information, such as your name, date of birth, your address, and things like that. It also asks for some information about your re most recent passport. And if your name has changed, you would enter some information about that in number 11. Then you'll sign the page where it says applicant's legal signature and simply continue to page two. On page two, you'll enter a little bit more information. And again, it's very straightforward. And if you have any upcoming travel plans, you'll share that in number 20. Now, once you've completed the application, at the very bottom of the application, it shares where to mail your application. There are two options for routine service, meaning you're not expediting it. Depending on where you live, which state you're in, you'll pick one of those two addresses. And if you're expediting it, there is one address in Philadelphia, which is where you will mail your application regardless of which state you live in. Now, here's what you need to send with your completed application form. Your most recent passport. It will be mailed back to you, but don't be alarmed if it doesn't come in the same package as your new passport. It will likely come in a separate mailing. Next, you'll need one colored passport photo, which you will staple to the application. Now, the easiest thing to do is go to the closest Walgreens, Dwayne Reed, Walmart, whatever the closest facility is that does passport photos near you. And if you wear glasses, remember to take them off. No glasses in passport photos. 
If your name has changed, you'll have to send a certified copy of one of the following, a marriage certificate, a divorce decree, or a court ordered name change document. If you do not have any of these, you'll have to apply for a passport in person. Your proof of name change document will be mailed back to you, but again, it will likely come in a separate mailing and will not be in the package with your new passport. Now, let's talk money and timelines. If you're with me so far, hit the like button below and let's keep going. As of today, the Department of State website says that standard processing time is six to eight weeks, and if you choose to expedite it, it's two to three weeks. If you need it even faster than that, let me know in the comments and I would be happy to help. A passport book currently costs $110. If you choose not to expedite your passport, that is all you pay. If you choose to expedite your passport, you will pay an additional $60. Now, I want to show you the fee calculator on the Department of State website so that you're able to accurately calculate the fees that are due at the time that you apply. Now, to access the fee calculator, we're going to go back to the page where we got Form DS-82. Again, you'll scroll down, but a little further this time to number 5, where you see Calculate Fees. When you expand on that and go down a little bit, you'll see a link for Passport Fees. We're going to click on that and it'll take you to a page where at the very top you'll see a fee calculator. Now here we're going to answer a few questions and follow the prompts. So it starts with where do you currently reside, which is the United States. Then you'll enter your date of birth, and I'm just going to pick an arbitrary number for now. Have you ever had a US passport? Yes. Do you still have the passport in your possession? Yes. Are you replacing a limited validity passport? Now if your passport was valid for 10 years, then the answer is no. What is the issuance date of your passport? So now I'm just going to pick a date in the last 15 years. So let's say 2010, February 2nd. Do you require any changes or corrections to what is currently printed on your passport? So now whether you answer yes or no, if you've had a name change, it doesn't really matter for this fee calculator. So I'm just going to say no and go on to next. And I'm going to apply for a passport book. And would you like to add a passport card for an additional $30? No, I would not. Now here, Let's say I want an expedited passport, and to make it even faster, I'd like the one to two day delivery. It will then calculate my total amount, which would be $187.13, which you would pay to the Department of State by check or money order. Now, I would recommend using this fee calculator to calculate your fees before you submit your application because while fees don't change very often, you want to make sure that they haven't changed recently and that you're submitting the right amount to avoid any delays in getting your new passport. Now, how do you pay this passport fee? You pay it with a check or money order, which you will include with your passport application. You make the check or money order payable to the U.S. Department of State. Be sure to print your name and date of birth on the front of the check or money order. Now you're ready to mail your completed application. You must use the United States Postal Service to mail your application and it must be trackable. Just tell the post office you need a tracking number and they'll know which method to use. Do not use delivery services like FedEx. If you choose to expedite your application, be sure to write the word expedite in large letters on the outside of your envelope and be sure to use an envelope large enough so that you don't actually have to bend the application. Once you get your new passport, your new passport number will be different than that on your old passport. So if you have any accounts linked to that old passport number, such as a global entry ID or things like that, be sure to log in and change your passport number. If you have any other questions about renewing your passport, leave me a comment. And if you found this video helpful, hit the like button below, subscribe to our channel, and share this with your fellow citizens. Happy traveling!